Go to tapjars.com to learn dreams, engage my services, and support the channel. Now onto these other settings, and I'll use the the puppet for this stuff. So these are the, the default settings for these things, uh, but you can change them all. Um, and this to do with the built-in camera and how it works. Right, camera height. Uh, so if I just go into test mode actually and, and play time, it's kind of, instead of in the center of the character, it's kind of at 60% up sort of thing. So if I like depossess and lower it, possess again, then now it's lower close to the ground i deep possess and go higher. So this is kind of the the point from the ground up going along the uh, object that is being possessed, in this case the puppet. Uh, the kind of focal point, the point that it orbits around. So that's why it's at 60% because it's usually a good idea to be around the middle. Camera distance is how far away from that point the camera will float to. So, so it's around this this distance, but then if we make it bigger, now we're around this distance, and that affects the um, even if you're not possessing it, it affects how it how the camera will behave. So if you have a large character, you'll probably want to zoom out, or if you have a lot of action going on, you'll probably want to zoom out so the player can actually see what's happening. Also, you might want the camera tilt to be more kind of down like that. So what this does is the default tilt it will go to. So I can move it around with the right stick and look down. But as I run around again, it will go back down to this 11% or 11 degrees. So if I make the tilt higher, then as I run around, it will go to a higher viewpoint. If you have some platforms, for example, if you have some tricky jumping section or something, then you'll probably want it to be looking down like that, so you can the player can actually see what's going on. If you leave it at the um, at the default camera tilt, and I'll make that more reasonable, um, then when they get to here, they're at an awkward angle to see what's going on at, and they'll be constantly like, oh, "I'm trying to." look down all the time and they keep on adjusting it with the right stick but you can just adjust that tilt when they're in this area using a keyframe or something so that they will have a better view for this bit of platforming or another thing that can affect the angle is a camera pointer which i have more in-depth tutorials about and you can just do that uh, and now like no matter where you are that camera pointer is active because it's the only one in the scene and you have this other vantage point but it kind of means that you can't use the right stick at all uh, which may not be what you want uh, so you might want to say like have a trigger zone over here that says when you're in this area Then we'll, we'll uh, power that that uh, camera pointer and use that other angle. Otherwise, we can look around as normal. So we'll run over here, and then it'll adjust while you're doing the platforming, and then adjust again when you come out of the platforming. Or, as I said, with the uh, with a keyframe, you could do keyframe change the angle to something higher while you're in that zone so we got the nice like low view when you're running around and then when we get to a platforming bit it starts adjusting as you run around and then it'll start adjusting down again but uh, something to note is like I'm in the zone right now but it hasn't adjusted it until I start like running around a bit so these tilt things and stuff only care if you're running around so that you can get a nice view but it won't keep w uh, wandering away 
um, from the nice angle you set it at as a player. It will wait until you start moving again. So if we get a, a camera, we can demonstrate what field of view is. The, um, the gizmo kind of has this funny weird shaped box thing. And this is based on the field of view. So when you're like that, then you'll only see that tiny little bit of the sky. And if you're like that, you'll see this big bit of the sky, but it will be kind of shrunken down into on your screen. So if we do like that, uh, yeah, if we can just like look, uh, possess the camera with L1 and X, we can look around and stuff and see it with that uh, POV, no, no, uh, FOV. And we can make it lower. And now it's like looking at the same thing, but only a small thing. And it's kind of zooming into it. And again, and it's zooming in even more and so on. So that's what field of view does. And you can do that with the controller sensor. So if we make it really small, then we're like zoomed way into this character and we can like zoom, we can move the camera out, but also be zoomed way in. And now it's kind of almost like an isometric kind of view to it. And I've got other tutorials about that kind of stuff. Aperture. So uh, by default, a controller sensor won't have an aperture setting on it, but the platforming puppet has 50% aperture. So that means stuff that is further away, like that over there, is kind of fuzzy and blurry. And as you get closer to it, it becomes more in focus. So 100% aperture, you can see it more pronounced. Now that stuff is very blurry in the distance, but at zero, it's not blurry at all. And everything's crisp, um, which is actually a little better for rendering performance. So if you're having like rendering performance issues with your, your puppet running around, uh, you might want to turn the aperture down to zero. Yeah, so now if we put this into a head tracker, uh, head tracker, boop, and we can preview the view like that. So let's move it like that. Get like that. Okay, so it's all like crisp and stuff, and put that back to the fifty percent it was. Then it's all blurry because that is closer to the camera. So the so the camera is there, the view is there, and that's the focal distance. So anything closer to or further than the focal distance gets more and more blurry. So that's quite close. And then even if it was even if it was like way out here, now it's crisp even when we're running around. But then you change this to have a small scale and now it's super blurry because it's super far away from the distance because we go here and it's tiny in there and really far away from the focal distance there so but if we turn the aperture down then the focal distance doesn't matter it blurs less and less based on the distance so now if it's zero it won't blur anything at all and now it's totally crisp. Yay! And you won't like clip into stuff. So like if you're around here, it'll only clip into it when the actual camera does, and then it will the camera pops through it anyway. So you won't you'll pretty much never see it uh, the objects clip through stuff. Uh, VR scale is the same as on a camera gadgets. VR scale, so I won't get into exactly what that does. And platforming shadow, so by default that's a zero as well. So as we jump and stuff, there's nothing underneath us showing us where we're going to land. So it's a common trick to show a platforming shadow in platforming games so that the player can better gauge where they're going to land, even if it's not like there's no real light above them, it's just like a fake shadow. Uh, so that's what that does. It's kind of the um, the opacity of it. So 100% opacity, it's very dark. And you can make it really subtle like that or however you want to do it.
one thing to note is right so if i jump on here you can see the the uh, platforming shadow on the platform however it kind of goes down the side of things like here and goes through things like over here because it's not a real light it's not like stopped by something and it's not a real shadow so it's not cast on something and and blocked by this object um it's just like a a rendering trick to just show what the character looks like from the top down here um in just a straight line going down through the whole scene so that's just if you see a weird thing going on that's what it is thanks for watching i hope you learned something interesting go to patreon.com slash to learn something new every day